We will now have our second senior reflection uh, by Liam Richardson. Um, so it's rather fitting actually that uh, Miss Marcy opened today talking about beginnings and stuff. I didn't know uh, that's what she was talking about, but that kind of aligns with what I have to say. So I'm Liam Richardson, good morning. Uh, if you know me either as a student or as a classmate or as someone you just see in the hall, uh, you know I have a tendency to take every project I do and integrate music into it somewhere. I couldn't write an American government semester final if it wasn't about censorship laws. I couldn't do my big thunder chicken chat if it wasn't about a single seven second drum break. But I'm throwing a last minute curveball here because I'm not focused on music today. However, my reflection is still composed of allegories to the music, to the media, sorry, that I enjoy. And it is taking some structural inspiration from the music I love. Um, because like the glow or the two-headed boy, my speech has two parts. Part one is about a game, a video game from the early 2000s. It's one you might not have ever heard of. It's not even one I've ever played. Um, but that's not important. It's not gonna stop me from talking about it and it won't stop you from understanding my thesis. The biggest thing you have to know is that Eco is a game about holding hands. You play as a young boy, the titular Eco, who's locked away in a great castle. Inside, you find the princess, Yorda, also locked away in a cage. The game sees the two of you escaping together, holding hands the entire time. As if you ever let go of each other's hands for too long, great shadowy ghouls are gonna emerge from the earth and recapture you and lock you away again. Now, as the game reaches its end, the castle is starting to collapse, and our protagonists are making their last dash across a great bridge. But as they go, the bridge starts to fall, and Eco slips. Yorda grabs Eco's hand and tries to pull him back up, but the castle's queen arrives on the bridge, and Yorda has no choice but to let Eco fall into the sea. Now, the game plays out like a traditional video game would. He, he gets back up, he beats, you know, he, he defeats the queen, you know, it's a happy ending. But he falls unconscious, and an apparition of Yorda arrives and takes him to a rowboat and sends him off to sea. The credits roll, and the game ends with Eco waking up on a golden shore. Now, Eco is not only a game about holding hands. It's a game about growing up. We, this class, we were the ones in the tower. We found someone's hand to take, our parents, our, our mentors, our coaches. We are guided and kept safe for as long as possible, but it's time that the bridge splits and we're gonna be dangling from the precipice and we'll have to let go. We're gonna fall, we're gonna land in the rowboat and we're gonna all spend some time on some rough and shaky seas, but eventually all of us are gonna find our way to a brighter shore. And this is where Eco the game ends, but it's where the path of us as individuals starts, which brings me to the second part, part two of the reflection and the part of our lives that Eco left unwritten. Now, a common piece of advice of reassurance that I've heard over the past few months is that graduation isn't about ending things. It's about starting something new. And that is wonderful advice if you fear the ending, but what if you feel daunted by what awaits? We're, we're pulling ourselves to our feet now on that beach and we're starting a whole new journey up a huge mountain that is the rest of our lives. And so many other people have made that journey before us. All of, all of you, all of you, you've, you've all, you're all up that mountain, you're making it, and you've done things. And now the expectation is we have to, we have to do those things, if not go even farther. I mean, we're, we're so new to this climb, we have so little experience. Can, can everyone up the mountain even see us here? Can they make us out? It's, we're going from the grandest beings in all of school worlds to the smallest in the real world. I mean, we're, we're small, are we not? We're, we're like bugs, we're, we're like insects, you know? And that's, that's daunting to me. But simultaneously, I think I found power in this insect outlook. I mean, Cockroaches. Cockroaches are almost invincible. Termites can build mounds taller than people, and then there's, there's ants. Ants. 
I mean, ants can carry a hundred times their weight. They can withstand thousands of times their own weight and pressure, and they work together in colonies and are a capable force to be reckoned with. It's okay to feel like the world is so much bigger than us because it isn't gonna stop what any of us will do or can do, nor will it stop the unwritten story that's starting on that shore. I've gotten to know this class very well over the past few years, and I know that ant-like demeanor, it's not quelling any of these guys. It's not stopping them anytime soon. We'll all be the ants. We'll all carry 100 times the stress and be strong through it. We'll stand up to all the pressure the world puts on us, and we'll always be our own tough colony to fall back on. To my class, I really do wish nothing but the absolute best for all of you. And I hope that whenever any one of you feels like you don't have what it takes compared to the population who's up the mountain, you can remember our small stature in the world will never define who we are. And we are really capable of anything. Even if for now, we might still seem like ants from up there. Thank you. Okay.